All right, stocks shot up today on news that Bernanke's leaving the door open to QE3. But as you can see, they gave back most of their ground, finished up about 44 points. The real story remains gold. Gold surged over 23 bucks to a new all-time high. And get this, gold is up 7% in just the last seven days. That there is a move. And talking about gold, Fedhead Ben Bernanke found himself in the hot seat on Capitol Hill today. Take a listen to this exchange with Texas Republican Congressman and presidential candidate Ron Paul. Do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, it's if it has been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. All right, there you have the exchange that caught everybody's attention today. We are glad and honored to welcome back uh, Congressman Ron Paul from Texas, who also is running for the presidency. Congressman Paul, gold is not money. What was Bernanke driving at, eliminating history? I'm not exactly sure, because I think he has to protect the dollar, and he has to define the dollar because the dollar has to be a monopoly. You know, if you're in the private sector today and you try to enforce the Constitution and use gold and silver as legal tender, even if you use silver dollars, U.S. dollars, they will come down pretty hard on you. You can end up in prison if you do that. So for paper money to work, you have to have real, real strong legal tender laws, and you have to use the force of government because they can't stand the competition. Of course, I'd like to change that by permitting competition and uh, allow us to compete in the marketplace and let us use something other than Federal Reserve notes if we so choose. Let me ask you about those options. You are the head of the Oversight Subcommittee for Monetary Policy. Are you going to submit legislation? Are you going to hold hearings on any of this? Oh, yes. We have a bill already in on competing currencies, and we uh, have had some preliminary hearings, but we will have more on the competing currency issue. Because I, I predict and anticipate this next year is going to be hectic. I think we're just beginning to see uh, the down, you know, the, the, the results of what uh, QE2 and QE1 has done. So I expect that we're going to have a lot of people unhappy with higher prices. You know, today I cited the private sources, and they claim that prices are going up over 9%. I don't know if you watched that or not, but I happen to believe that consumer prices are actually going up much more so than the government states. Well, let me ask you, gold prices are soaring in the marketplace, and many people think they're soaring because of the expectation that the Fed might ease some more with quantitative easing three. I don't know what they're going to call it. They may jam another $600 billion in. Who knows, Mr. Paul? I sure don't know. But can you challenge him in a hearing? Can you put him in front of you and maybe surround yourself with colleagues from both sides of the aisle and ask him? what he's doing to the value of our money? Actually, I'm not uh, permitted to do that under the House rules. I'm a subcommittee, and they have sort of standing rules that a subcommittee does not qualify to have the Secretary of the Treasury or the Federal Reserve Board Chairman uh, before that committee, because I've checked into that, and I would not have subpoena powers to insist that he come. What about the, the Fed audit uh, rule? Now, I believe you signed on to a Fed audit. Where does that stand? Is there a way to put some heat on Bernanke through that vehicle? Yeah, and I think we've achieved uh, something there. We've had some court cases that have been won uh, that we did not get our bill passed last year, although we passed it in the House. We had every Republican support a true audit of the Federal Reserve. That bill has been reintroduced, but we don't have as many signatures right now as we did before. But out of that, they did concede minor audits, and we're supposed to get some more information very soon from that audit. So uh, with the court cases and that minor audit, we are learning a lot more about the Fed. We did find out it, uh, that uh, at least a third of the Federal Reserve activity during the crisis went to foreign banks. So I think that's rather interesting. They weren't worrying about, you know, our mortgage holders here or our ho people who lost their jobs and their homes, but they did worry about foreign banks. Just one last one, uh, Congressman, quickly if you would. There's a big movement to relink the dollar to gold, a la Bretton Woods, which was not so long ago. It ended 1971. The dollar was literally redeemable into gold at a fixed price. It was about $35 an ounce. Why not go back there as a way of putting the clamp on the Fed and restoring the dollar's value to gold? Well, it would be better than what we have today, and that's what you need is a clamp on the Fed so they can't print. There's, uh, there are some limits. But going back only to Bretton Woods, I would suggest we go back and read Henry Hazlitt, who looked at that in the 1945, and he predicted what would happen. He said that it wouldn't work, and he was right. And by